Namaste all. Today I'm going to speak on the demonic and hostile forces, part two. And after this, there will be many, many different videos to come. The one on animals that I promised you will be next week. And after that, we'll go into many of Sri Aurobindo's magnificent definitions of terms in the Integral Yoga. So, we begin from Sri Aurobindo. About the contact with the world and the hostile forces, that is, of course, always one of the sadhak's chief difficulties. But to transform the world and the hostile forces is too big a task, and the personal transformation cannot wait for it. What has to be done is to come to live in the power that these things, these disturbing elements, cannot penetrate, or if they penetrate, cannot disturb. And to be so purified and strengthened by it that there is in oneself no response to anything hostile. If there is a protecting envelopment, an inner purifying descent, and as a result, a settling of the higher consciousness in the inner being, and finally, its substitution, even in the most external, outwardly active parts, in place of the old, ignorant consciousness, then the world and the hostile forces will no longer matter, for one's own soul at least. For there is a larger work, not personal, in which, of course, they will have to be dealt with. But that need not be a main preoccupation at the present stage. Whatever point the adverse forces choose for attack, however small it may seem to the external human mind, becomes a crucial point, and to yield it up may be to yield to them one of the keys of the fortress. Even if it is a small postern door, it is enough for them if they can enter. Hostile forces attack every sadak. Some are conscious of it, others are not. Their object is either to influence the person, or to use him, or to spoil his sadhana, or the work, or any other motive of the kind. Their object is not to test, but their attack may be used by the guiding power as a test. There is always this critical, hostile voice in everybody's nature, questioning, reasoning, denying the experience itself, suggesting doubt of oneself and doubt of the divine. One has to recognize it as the voice of the adversary, trying to prevent the progress and refuse credence to it altogether. There are no sadaks who are never attacked by wrong forces. But if one has a complete faith and self-consecration, one can throw off the attack without too much difficulty. There are two things that make it impossible for them, the hostile forces, to succeed even temporarily in any attack on the mind or the vital. First, an entire love, devotion, and confidence that nothing can shake. Secondly, a calm, 
and equality in the vital as well as in the mind, which has become the fundamental character of the inner nature. Suggestions then may still come. Things go wrong outside, but the being remains invulnerable. Either of these two things is sufficient in itself, and in proportion as they grow, even the existence of the hostile forces becomes less and less of a phenomenon of the inner life, though they may still be there in the outer atmosphere. It is those who are of a highly sattvic nature, especially if strongly surrendered to the mother, who escape the invasions or attacks of the hostile forces in the mind and vital. That does not mean that they escape the difficulties of the lower human nature or of the sadhana, but these are not complicated by the effective support given to them by the hostiles. It is not that there is no point in them that might be pressed upon by the hostiles, but in actual fact, they cannot get at these points because of the build of the nature, which is fortified against them owing to the large proportion of Prakasha and Sukha, see the Gita, in which, which the Sattvic brings with it. But otherwise, there is an internal clarity, a balance, a happy composition in the being, reflecting sunlight easily, less amenable to the touch of cloud and tempest, which gives no handle to the hostile forces. The nature refuses to be violently agitated or disturbed or upset. At most, it is the body that the hostiles can attack. And there too, because the nervous being is calm and it is only through the most material that it can be done. They, the hostile forces, come because they were freely permitted in the past. So they want to renew and continue their action an entire rejection and a complete turning to the divine are the way to meet them. Evil forces can always attack in moments of unconsciousness or half consciousness or through the subconscious or external physical, so long as all is not supramentally transformed. Only if the force is there, they can at once be pushed back. The hostile forces do not need a cause for attacking. They attack whenever and whoever they can. What one has to say, what one has to see, is that nothing responds or admits them. You are right. The hostile forces, their attacks, their suggestions ought now to be superannuated, out of date, out of place here in this sadhana. If somebody would realize that and fulfill it in his sadhana, the others might perhaps get strength to follow. At present, these things are still here because the sadhaks open themselves to them out of habit, out of desire, out of attraction for the drama of the vital, out of fear, out of passive response and unresisting inertia. But there is no real necessity for them any longer or true justification for their presence here. The outer world is a different matter. The sadhana could very well go on 
and should go on as an unfolding, a natural falling away of defects and difficulties, a coming of greater and greater light and power and transformation. The hostile forces are there in the world to maintain the ignorance. They were there in the sadhana because they had the right to test the sincerity of the sadhaks in their power and will to cleave to the divine and overcome all difficulties. But this is only so long as the higher light has not descended into the physical. Now it is descending. It is sufficiently there for anyone to receive it more and more fully so that the way becomes smooth and open, a progressive development and not a struggle. A progress made often stirs the adverse forces to activity. They want to diminish its effect as much as possible. When you get a decisive experience of this kind, you should remain concentrated and assimilated, avoiding self-dispersion and all externalizing of the consciousness. Naturally, the hostile forces are always on the watch to rob, to rob what they can of the things received by the sadak. Not that they profit by them, but they prevent them from being used to build up the divine in life. There are always hostile forces that try to stop or break the experience. If they come in, it is a sign that there is something in the being, vital or physical, that either responds or is too inert to oppose. Namaste all.